Welcome to Toffee TV. Today I am joined by my good mate, David Feely. I haven't seen him for a while because we are living in bonkers times. Uh, hopefully there is light at the end of the tunnel at last. But yeah, it's been too long. Dave, how are you, my mate? I'm good, brother. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> Obviously, yourself, who is normally used to travelling the width, breadth, and everywhere else to watch the Blues, just briefly, how difficult has it been the last eight months kind of not to be able to go and watch them? Concise answer is extremely. Yeah. Because the thing about the Toffees, and you know this, I'm not trying to tell you anything you don't know, but people think it's just turn up on a Saturday and go to match, it isn't. It's my whole life. Yeah. By the time I saw tickets, I, you know how I'll do it. Uh, yeah, and yeah. then transport, and then for the next week, and people's giving me dough, and it's a whole thing. Mm. It's existentially, it literally knocked me sideways, mm. genuinely, because, I, I, like you say, it's not just me who does it, others do exactly the same, many others, mm. but it becomes like, that's your routine. That's, it, it's, it's like getting up in the morning, yeah. And having a wash, it's like literally. So it was an existential crisis. It wasn't just about 90 minutes on a Saturday. Yeah. And that's that's the bit what got me. That was the bit what's been more difficult to deal with. Because I've never been a telly fan, as you well know. Yeah. So to go from there to being people on the internet saying, oh, it's great, we'll get them for nothing. The games are for nothing. And every day, I'm like, that's not it, really. That's... That's not enough. Yeah. So it's been a big deal. It's I didn't realise at the time. I'll give you an example. The last time I was in the ground, the last time anybody was in the ground, we got a 4 0 Arden at Chelsea. Mm. And and it wasn't good. No, it was no, beyond it was awful, bad. In fact, it? it was awful. However, walking out that ground in the morning, if they'd have come to me three months ago and said, Here's a contract, sign it now to go back to Chelsea this week to have exactly the same performance and exactly the same results, will you sign it in a heartbeat? Yeah. That's how much I missed it, to yeah. try and give you an insight to it. That's how much. It wouldn't have mattered to me because I just want to be back to that again. I, I want to be back to the stage where it, we don't even think about it. Well, now we do have to think about it and join ballots and this and that and the other thing. And I don't know. I, I underestimated I underestimated it, maybe. Yeah, it is it is mad, isn't it? Walking out the... I didn't go to Chelsea, but walking out the United game the week before, Dominic Calvin yeah. been there, was choked off, I was aggrieved. But walking out, walking out the ground that day, you know, to think we still wouldn't be back in the stadium in December is, is was absolutely mad. And it, for, it, listen, for yourself, it's, it's slightly different to me because, obviously, you live on your own, so it's a different thing. And... and even for me, like going to match and seeing people, but for yourself, mixing with loads of people, and then the next minute you, you're having to be in on your own and you're not able to go to the match and see everyone else. And that affects a lot of people, isn't it, Dave? It's not just you, but that must be difficult for you as well because obviously you've got all your match mates and everything, and then you're not being able to go and mix with them. Was that was that a diff that been really difficult? Has that been even more difficult, would you say, than actual watching Everton play kick a ball around the pitch? Yeah. That was something else I underestimated. I've been in here now for nine and a half months on my own with about, I met, I've met my mother masked up and socially distanced yeah, maybe yeah. five times in that time. We've all had birthdays and this thing's happened and that thing's happened. Yeah. And it has been tough. Yeah. It, it has, I'm not going to underestimate it. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh yeah, I've bounced through it. Yeah. I really haven't. No, That's no. Particularly this last one. I've yeah. struggled, proper struggled with it. Yeah. And, and and mental health, our club actually are fantastic. We both know this and yeah, yeah. we both know people who are involved in that side as personal friends. Mm -hmm. It's not just an ostensible two-dimensional thing, but we see yeah, we yeah. know hands-on what goes on. Yeah, yeah. And, and even that, even with that knowledge and with that insight and with that connection, personal connection we've got, I underestimated it. Mm. And I've got a history of mental health things mm. in the past, but this come like a train. Yeah. It really did. It was, like I said to you before, it was an existential crisis. I had to examine everything in my life because mm. what that's what you do if you sit on your own all day. Yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you, you really do. What am I doing? Why am I doing it? 
So it's all that. But tie that into Everton, that was the light at the end of the tunnel for me because I've got great friends. I mean, all of my friends, all of my 10 best friends, 15, 20 best friends are in some way or other linked to the Everton Football Club in yeah, some yeah. way. Yeah. So it, it, it's literally the heartbeat of my life. My family are, are linked to the Everton Football yeah, Club yeah. And, and they're hands-on. Yeah. So it has been tough. I'm not. Go- I'm not going to sit here and say it hasn't. To yeah. be honest. No, we're at, listen. It's affected us. It's affected everyone. I'm sure. You know, our days and weeks where it's you just. I don't know. You just feel like you're on the floor. You feel lower than a snake's belly. So obviously, and I've got people around me who see every day. You know, and that, that's so must have been even worse for you. But you, we've all we do all have those moments because it's the party. You like stuff. Free, you want to call it there's freedom, isn't it? Your freedom's been absolutely taken away. You absolutely you go and see people, you know. But my mum recovering from cancer, I can't hug her as much yeah, as I know. I know my old darling was exactly, exactly the same. The same, isn't it? So it's yeah. it's every we're all dealing with that. But let's move let's move past that because like I said, right at the start, that is now finally seems to be a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, there was an announcement this obviously we come out of lockdown this week. There's an announcement this week that football fans in Less than two or three can go the match, which Liverpool is now in, despite being um, the epicenter of a plague. If you the red down the street about five weeks ago, what was coming out of there? But we have managed to turn it round, which is great news, and, and well done everyone in the city and, and all of that. But it's come out to two thousand um, fans being allowed back into the stadium for the next for next week against Chelsea. So first and foremost, that's a that's good news, isn't it? It's a step forward to getting back to the match. Absolutely. Personally, I haven't applied mm. because I, for the reasons I've just told you, I don't want to go to the match on my own. Yeah, I don't want yeah. to sit in the mix. No, I'm not. No, no, it's I agree. fantastic. Yeah. It's incremental progress, yeah, and yeah. I'm I'm taking it all day long. Yeah, However, yeah. personally, I look at the kids. Look at how much, what's our forty-five percent to fifty-five percent season tickets holders at Everton are under sixteen years of age. Mm. So I look at that and think maybe I should let them have a go because the mm. kids can't get chosen and not go with the fathers or the parents yeah, or their yeah, uncle yeah. or whoever they are. So maybe it's time for me just right now to to say, do you know what? It's more important to them than it is mm. to me because I know what that's like. So if I was that age. My father would, I'm all, he's been dead and gone many years, but I'm assuming my dad would say, I'm not that bothered, I can wait, but he needs to be there now yeah, because yeah. you need that. You know what it's like. You've done exactly the same yourself. You need that when you're a child to, 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 to drive, to be in there, to smelling it, to yeah. hearing it, to seeing it. All of those things are really, really intrinsic to the experience. So I'm looking at it thinking, I can step back. Just only for now, just yeah. to, for the next four or five games, let the kids get back in first, and then I'll I'll be home and away again as soon as yeah. they give me the chance. Yeah. However, right now I'm thinking, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, yeah. and then once we get the kids back, that's normality. Mm. Then because the place is full of kids, yeah, you can't walk down Goodison Road. That fan zone, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, on a match day. You've got to, it, it's all part of our package. We are a really idiosyncratic club. Mm. I've got friends, close friends, who are fans of other clubs. Really, really big fans of other clubs, as much as we are. They go to yeah, games yeah. as much as us. Yeah. And they're really impressed by that side of our club, that, mm. that inclusiveness, that everyone gets a voice, everyone's as important as everybody else, old, young big woman, man, you know, big, small, whatever. We are inclusive. So I think if we're going to do it, I think we should include the kids first and have them right at the front of the queue personally. So I'm I'm great. I'm up for it. I can't wait. But just right now, I think I might let them go first. Yeah. I've got, I'm in a situation where Zach's asking me every week, you know, when can we go back? Can we go to match? Sure. And I'm, I don't know what, I, I personally, I'm, not that bothered at the moment because yeah. it's, I was always for a while people have asked me oh you know what's your view or about if reduced and I was always no we either all go back or none of us go I've changed that view slightly to because some people do need it I get that 
Um, I still, I still would rather be in Goodison Park when it's full. I'm with, I'm with you. I, I'm with you entirely. I want to see everyone. I, the other thing, I'll be honest with you. The other thing is, I don't want to sit in the top balcony. I do I, I'm, I'm a shit back. I don't want to sit in the top balcony. It's too high for me. Um, oh, it's not because it's too high for yeah. me. I just don't want to sit in the top. No, but it's too high for me. I don't like it. I don't like it. So listen, it is what it is. I'm made up that some people are going to get the opportunity to with the ballot and all that to go the game next week against Chelsea, and hopefully, this is the start of. I, I just hope, and we can't tell at the moment. I hope that we don't have a little bit of a. Uh, climb up the hill and we're getting there and yeah. then it's locked down again and everything's shut again for another few weeks while we start and then we have to start again I'm open this is the start of an incremental um ease out of out of these measures and we can go from two thousand to to ten thousand and then do you know what I mean I'm hoping that's the yeah. path we take. I don't know whether it'll happen. I don't know. I, I well you, know. there's two sides to that particular coin. Yeah. Looking from the outside, you'd say Christmas is yeah. an absolute warning sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, the vaccine, if mm. this was a seesaw, yeah, I look at Christmas and think that's just an accident waiting to happen. Yeah. If you, you should have lifted it after Christmas, that, that if you're going to sensibly, yeah. you know. However, it appears that the confidence about rolling out this vaccine, yeah. so but even that, it's 60 odd million people in this country. Yeah. It's only so you know, thousand isn't it the first thing? It, so. it, it, even an election yeah. in this country is is a logistical nightmare. Yeah, yeah. And and you've only you haven't you've just got to walk in, put your, put an X on a piece of paper and walk out again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's genuinely a logistical nightmare. So if you if you transfer that, and only people over eighteen can do that, yeah, in the election. Yeah. yeah. This is going to include children and everything, and people in hospital and in jail and in yeah. all over the place. So I see it as a logistical problem, which is not going to be done by the end of January. And no. I don't care how optimistic you are. However, should that counterbalance the, the almost likely events of a spike post-Christmas and New Year, well, then you'd look to say, I don't know, off the top of my head, Easter, mm. whereby normality would then yeah, be yeah. rolling back in. And, you, and, and you, now, instead of being... 15 20 percent, you might be 45 to 60 percent. Yeah, well, that really is a light at the end of the tunnel, yeah, then. Yeah, and, you can, and, and now we can start saying, Right, well, we'll go from there to there. I look at the match, for example, and and I think, What about the cues for the eating? And what about the toilets? Just you know, and and, and, and the, they sell lager or, or beer. Mm. So once you drink beer, once you've had two of them. No, they say the idiom is drink a six pack, you're an eight and nine pack. Yeah. So that's just anyone, anywhere yeah. on the yeah. planet. Yeah. So therefore, you drink beer, you're going to need the toilet. Mm. So, and, and if you look, not just our ground, every other everyone. ground. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the limited confined spaces. Mm. So those have got to be factored in. So logistically, again, I can see there being problems and it's not going to be a, oh, that's gone now. Let's all get back to it next Monday. Mm. But like I say, if you can roll it out into a three, three and a half month projection, yeah. well, right now, like that contract, that Chelsea, I'd sign it here, sitting here yeah. in front of you now. Yeah. Well, it's a step forward, isn't it? And I'm, it'll be good. It'll be good for people who, who need it, who need to go to, you know, get back in and, and have that normality and, and I suppose it'll be interesting to see how the players respond as well, because I know that they've got used to playing in quiet grounds now, so a bit of noise will it'll be interesting to see how they cope with. I know it won't be mass noise, obviously, but it'll be noisier than no one. It'll else, help. Won't it? It'll help. Or, mm. So we'll see how we go. And then obviously, hopefully, we will all be back in you know, sooner rather than later. Yeah. But, yeah. but just over a, the way it works out, just over a quarter of the season gone. Now, yeah. um, 10 games. What have you made of it? Because obviously the opening, the opening seven games, everything was the world was great. Every day there was birds flying around your window, and there was butterflies, mm-hmm. and it was you know yeah, day yeah, seven, yeah, yeah. seven, and it was uh, it was taking us back to the halcyon days of the eighties for a, for a few weeks there when it was how many will we win by today? But um, obviously we've hit an inevitable bump in the road, you know, which the manager was at pains to tell us was coming anyway. 
uh, yeah. which was inevitable, wasn't it? But what, what have you made of it? Just first of all, what have you made of it overall? And then we'll break down why you think it, it is the way it is. So 10 games in, we're, we're eighth. We're five points off the top of the league. OK, we're probably five points off relegation as well. But that's where we are in the yeah. fight for Europe at this moment. So what have you made of it? Um, honestly, um, it's basically par for the course. It's where mm. I expected us to be. Mm. We kind of overachieved in the uh, in the first, like you say, eight, whatever games it was, yeah. and um, realities kind of set in, in in the latter time. And I don't think anything specifically to blame for that because during the season, you are going to encounter injuries, you are going to encounter loss of form and sendings off and, and su- suspensions and whatever. So if you look at it, when this season started, before this season started, prior to kicking a ball, I'd have probably said we'll finish about ninth, eighth, seventh. That's where we are right now because as a project, this is a long-term deal and we're literally not even at dinner hour on the first day yet. Mm. Genuinely, mm. so to expect a, a Harry Potter type uh, 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 um, miraculous uh, 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 change of circumstances, it was a reach mm. to, to myself personally. It was a reach. What we needed to do was put flags in the floor. Mishiri, yeah. Usmanov with the thing outside, flag in the floor. Mm. Carlo Ancelotti, his name above in the manager's seat in order to attract players. We couldn't have attracted without him, yeah. again, a flag in the floor. Mm. But it's not a quick fix. It doesn't, it doesn't guarantee success because if it did, Chelsea and Man City would have just been passing the league between themselves for the last 10 years. Mm. And although they have done that to, to, to an extent, Arsenal have had how many billionaires on their, on their board for, I don't know, 15 now, Man 15 United. years? United. And Manchester United. So what it would tell you, is that you've really got to have a bit more. Mm. So it, it hasn't surprised me, honestly. Yeah. Like I say, I don't watch all the games live because I'm not a fan, particularly of Sky. I just I can't entertain them. I've yeah. never have been able to. However, I watch the, the synopsis of it. I watch the highlights of it. And I get the general flavour of what we do right and what we do wrong. Mm. My actual opinion is, if you really want my opinion, is that we've got a squad of maybe 14, 15 first team players in a squad of 28 to 30. Mm. And the rest, uh, with the greatest respect, and I'm not picking on individuals, it's not mm. their fault. It's the people who gave them the contracts. Yeah, That's yeah. who I'd be looking at. Yeah. And now we've got, if you say square pegs round holes, mm. well, we've got square pegs that don't even fit into square holes. So what you'd have, what you'd have then, is every time you get an injury or a suspension, or actually you look to change the substitutions, Klopp is now pushing for five substitutions. We could have 15 substitutions and still not be able to look at Fulham. That is a case in point. Mm. We're cruising the game. They make two average substitutions, Mm. and we decide to do the same. And we go 30 40% worse Mm. than we would. Basically, what I'm trying to say to you, we need our first 11 on the pitch most times, yeah. 90% of the time. And if yeah. we are, then, then we've got a possibility to wear teams. Yeah. We can defend, we can adapt our shape. As mm. soon as one, two, certainly three of those players, whomever they may be, yeah. as soon as they are gone, we will struggle because we just haven't got the quality to bring on. So that is not down to our manager. Mm. He hasn't even been here 12 months yet. So that's yeah. not him. That was that was a problem which existed for this manager, the last manager, the one before and the one before that. That's mm. upstairs, brother. Yeah. That's upstairs. And so now that spotlight needs shining in. And if nothing else, just to say, see that, that's a line. Mm. That will not happen anymore because I just said to you, we've got Usmanov and Mishiri and we've gone all serious FC now. Mm-hmm. So in order to do that and project that image globally, well, you've got to start acting it. You can't just talk the talk. You've got to walk the walk. And that problem will remain at least for this season, mm-hmm. probably into next season, because it's going to take three windows to get them out and, this, and, 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 and an, an improvement 
in that standard, in in numbers, in numbers, we need numbers. Not I'm to, not talking about squad numbers, but yeah, yeah. but but actual numbers in the squad. Mm. Number 22, 23, 24, 25, and upwards. They need to be able to come in and play six games on a row and win us four of them. Mm. Right now, that's a pipe dream, in my yeah. opinion. No, I think I think you're right. I think the problem with Everton have had is we've never. Rightly or wrongly, we've never allowed a manager to stick around, have we, longer than, you know, we've had, uh, you know, Moyes was, whether people liked them or not, Everton for 75, 80% of the time were good under David Moyes. We, yeah. all right, we, we didn't win the big games away from home, okay, but he knew, he had no money, really, and he knew exactly how to get you out. And I, I'm, I'm a great believer in this league isn't great anyway. If you get organised, I totally agree with you. If you get organised mm-hmm. in this league, and you can hear teams in the final third, you'll finish in Europe or there or thereabouts. Moyes is brilliant at that. He's doing it now at West Ham. The three players However, Ham. the thing what he did, actually, is getting back to my previous mm. points, it was basically the same 11 every week. Oh, of course. He, was, was, yeah. he, 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 had, he had his first yeah. team and he had people around the first team. Look what we would do for, just by way of example, from Howard's way, Kevin Richardson, Alan Harper. Mm. Kevin yeah. Richardson and Alan Harper would be first choice players. They might play four different positions mm. in this team, but yeah. they'd be on. If they're not in the 11, they're the two subs who are they're coming the first on first. Subs, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what we're missing. Mm. Well, David Moyes, that's where he struggled. That's why we never won at the big teams. Yeah, and that's he, why we never won it, because he just had that. He had 11, we didn't have the yeah. dough to get the next two or three to sit here and improve yeah. and make uh, uh, and give competition. For the people who are in that first team, and that's our problem today, as it was ten years ago. Well, if that's the case, look at the amount of money we've spent, brother. Oh, we spent so half therefore a half a billion. So therefore, the problem is upwards, not yeah. downwards. You have to look upstairs, and people have to be culpable. The amount of money they paid. I'm not picking out individuals because mm. they've changed. The faces have changed <laughs> over that period, and nothing has changed ostensibly for us going again. Yeah. So that's got to be the first thing. And if one lesson has to be taken out of this with the fans not in the ground, because all of a sudden we've become um, um, observers mm. as opposed to active participants. Yeah, we yeah. ourselves have won that team points we shouldn't have won. Yeah, Goodison definitely. Park, that, that backdrop definitely, behind yeah. you, has won them points. Well, that hasn't been available. Mm. So now... That spotlight goes on to other areas now yeah. and starts saying, well, actually, without them. So so I would say the first thing to solve is that next time you go into the transfer window for whomever it may be, mm. they have got to tick boxes that they haven't been ticking previously. Mm. And so then in so, over a three, five year period, you will then see an exponential increase in the performance level, in the ability level, in the ability to adapt and take on challenges, which we are not seeing at the moment. Well, just on that, because you're looking at our squad, what, I mean, what for you, what would that be? be what, what, what is this team lacking? I know, because I know what I think it is, but for you, what do you think it is? What, because the players yeah, I, bring in, when you look at that sub last week against Leeds, you know, we yeah. got beat by, and deservedly so, Leeds deserve to win. He did got beat by a team that has just come off from the championship. Didn't waltz the championship. They won it, but they didn't yeah. waltz it. They weren't 20 points clear and it was easy for them. They, they, they've been a really good side, in it? But they're a championship side. They haven't gone and bought six world-class players this summer. No, but what I mean is Everton have spent half a billion pounds since 2016, right? We had yeah. a sub bench where every player was the same. There was not on that on that bench, there was no dynamic pace. There was no athleticism. There was no. There's no left side. There was just nothing. There's so, no left side. There's there's no pace. There's no attacker. There's no uh, right. There's back. no attacker midfielder. There's no, no right back. So basically, getting back to Leeds, mm. the kind of it's Bielsa. Yeah, yeah. So what they are, they're really good going forward, mm. but they'll open the door to you mm. back backwards. So all the good sides they play this season, they'll probably score two, even three goals, like they did at Anfield. Yeah, against yeah. the good sides, but they won't win the game. No, no. Because the, the good sides will, will put score. the foot on the neck and kill them. Mm. We are not able to do that because yeah. we haven't got people. We need all of our better players 
to be seven or eight out of ten every yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. That's in, unless we can buy another twelve players in in the next window, two in all of the of the main uh, uh, positions through the park and a bit of width, and it'll still we'll be no better off because unless you solve that problem whereby the competition for places is as it is as capable as the people who are coming out to go in. Well, right now, it really isn't. No. And I'm not trying to pick on individuals. Like oh, I said, it's a yeah, fact. It's a fact. It is a fact, but it's an upstairs problem. Mm. They've been getting away with murder while we're slagging you, particularly what you do. How mm. many times have me and Mullen been on your show? We've talked about five yeah. or six different managers in the time I've been coming on. And we and we just negate it. The same thing, not because it's you doing that. Everybody does it mm. because the same problem keeps arising because we never change the fundamental aspect of what's wrong. We're buying players who cannot do the job long term. Even if you do it short term, I'll give you the, an example. Andre Gomez at Liverpool in the, in the Riga yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Mm. Looked at him and thought, oh yeah, three, four years. Sure. Bernard, the same, yeah. comes in, look cracker when we first got it, but unable to maintain it. Well, that should have been the person. This is not a personal dig no, at either no. of those two no. players. You could you could name Pam any yeah. of the uh, of five others and put their names in it. Mm. I'm just taking them by way of example. That's the people buying them. So why aren't they in Barcelona's team? Why aren't they doing this? And what is it that they lack? So then back to Bielsa. That's what he does. He just thinks I'll score more than you. A little bit like Martinez, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'll, I'll pack my team with forward players, and 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 with with and looking like you said, he didn't run away with the championship because the back door was always open. Yeah, yeah. And 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 teams will you, you grind the teams can do that to them, block it off two banks of four, and because they're not great at the back, they're always in the game. Mm. Yeah. Well, we can't even do that at the moment. We can't even we can't even go to a Moyes type in the trenches mentality yeah. and just do that because we need the Charleston, Calvert Lewin, Allen, and the defense to all turn up at once. And our fullbacks are doing two men's job. Both of them are doing two people's jobs every week. And and losing the both of them together has just been it's absolute death knell to us, to be perfectly frank. Just on, just finally, then, just on the manager, what the manager can do, because obviously he's here, he's got the squad. He's, a, you know, we know he's a world class manager. He's proved it. Yeah. He's got all the all the trophies to prove it. Do you think? Do you think Carlo maybe just needs to just for now try to try to work on a little bit more solidity and staff from there? Because I know it's difficult. He's lost, like you just mentioned, that we've lost two two of our fullbacks. I think you mentioned it before when we had the team that beat Spurs on day one. Is probably Everton's strongest team. What we've seen since then is Andre Gomez has dropped off again. You know, he's, he's yeah. good that day. He's, he's got worse for whatever reason. He said himself yeah. he's not fit. So it's whatever yeah. reason. And we've lost two fullbacks. So already we're down on that. What do you think? Charles are been... out for three games as well. Oh, yeah. But listen, killer. we had six players out in Newcastle, whatever it was. So, yeah. you know, Everton can't lose two players, let alone six at the moment. Correct. But do you yeah. just think for now we need to somehow. Get a, get a back four in and try to just stay in games and maybe try to... I know it's difficult because you just said we haven't really got the players to do it, but do you think that may be one way that Carlo can do it? Maybe put a, a little bit more of a defensive slight on it at the minute and try to... Because we're going to Burnley at the weekend. They, yeah. They've scored four goals this season, Burnley. Four yeah. goals. Dom's got ten. Dom scored as many goals as Arsenal have. Yes. Right. Yes, yes, yes. And then we've got Hamas has got three, and Richarlison's got Michael Keane's got a couple. So we yeah. know we've got goals on us. But Saturday will be a game where it's it's going to be tight. They're in your face. You know what you're getting. But do you think Everton could do with trying to keep it tight, work on a defensive side of it, knowing that the front three will get us a goal at some time in the game? I think that might be the way he, he needs to look at it. Just for now, I think I think he might on Saturday. But I also need to give you a caveat. Mm. I'll say that. I think he might on Saturday, but it's that the bodies can't... You haven't got enough bodies. Unless he goes with Nkoku at left-back, you I haven't would. got a back four. Yeah. yeah, but right, whether he does... He's, he's only a baby. Yeah. 
But and he's, he's literally played. Play, he's left. I, that's not enough. That's oh God, it was last Saturday. No, I'm, I agree with you. But I'm saying be there. maybe in Carlos's mm. head, that's the reason yeah, he went yeah. three at the back because yeah. actually three at the back means five at the back mm. conceptually. Yeah. It's it's three at the back when you've got the ball. It's mm. actually five. Well, it wasn't. No, it was still three, and that's less than four. So yeah. you may as well have gone four. Do you see what yeah. I'm saying to you? But I think he might get a bit pragmatic because of the exact what you just said about Burnley. They have not got width, pace, or are not going to get behind yet. Mm. So maybe he will do that and put an extra midfielder in and have kind of two banks of four yeah, and look yeah. for the others to try and to try and hit them with our weapons, but. Mm. I'd still say, I'd, I actually, when I saw that three at the back change, that's from Fulham, I think it was. Yeah. And that smacked to me, like, he knew. He mm. was frightened. As soon as Coleman wasn't there, he knew we couldn't play a back four anymore because mm. either side is just open. Because yeah. and, and, and of, of Hammers on the left and because of the, the huge gap with Seamus Coleman, who's 30-odd years of age now, by the way, but which again speaks to the problem of the upstairs thing. Yeah, yeah, Nobody's yeah. seeing the problems coming. It's it's not good enough. We done it with Baines, yeah. didn't we? We left Baines. We done it with I Baines. Mean, we Baines him, but we left them a year too long. And then luckily for yeah. us, Luca Dean come in and has been as good as he's been. As magnificent. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The transit. But that's what should have happened with Seamus. Seamus has been when he's fit and doesn't have to play every week and do ninety yard doggies. He can still perform. But yeah. he's had three hamstring injuries this season that we're only we've only ten games in. He's had yeah. three injuries already. John Joe yes. Kenny obviously isn't good enough. He doesn't fancy him, which no, he doesn't what, fancy him, but yeah. we knew anyway in the summer and we should have we should have yeah. really got a right back on loan. We we were saying it So all. then so but, then pragmatism is the yeah. is, is the order of the day. Mm. So I agree with you. Just put it this way. I agree with you. On the four against Burnley, I think mm. that might well be the case, even mm. if he plays somebody out of position yeah. and puts them at left back. See, I'd play, I think... Me personally, I'd have him come to a left back and I'd play Mason Holgate or Godfrey at right back. And so which, would I. Whichever one I didn't use at right back will play in the field. Would, well, play, yeah, because yeah, let yeah, the but... other two go and do what they do then. Because Alan's been would... great, but he leaves his position because he wants to go hunting the ball. It's a bit like Peter Reed. Once you get him, he needs to. If he, if he doesn't do, we but haven't got anyone to when do When he that does job. it, there's a big hole, which we've been getting punished from because of that. So, which is precisely the point. So, yeah. how I haven't finished. So, I agree with you. No, I'm not. I'm just. Yeah, I'm, go on. I'm, go I'm go trying on. to continue yeah, yeah. the point. So, I agree with you that Burnley, that might be right. Yeah. yeah. However, for the Man United game, for example, mm. in in the cup. I doubt very much, unless we've got yeah. bodies, proper bodies back, I doubt very much we'll go a flat back four because they'll just burst down the side of us. So we'll put an extra, the third defender in and look for it again, like I said to you, when you haven't got the ball to be five and yeah, just yeah. fill up space. Mm. Fill up space. And if there is runners, go with the runner. Yeah. Don't switch off, pass it on to the next fella. You are now in that position. You go with the runner. Yeah. So never mind about forward. It's it's as it's as important without the ball in this league. Look at him, Klopp. Yeah. About the Gagan press, it, it mm. it's their statistics are are better without the ball than they, they are, are actually with, with the ball. Mm. So unless we learn, this manager is really clever. Like you said, he doesn't do what he's done. Mm. But you you can it, you, he might be the best bricklayer in the world. But if I give him Weetabix to make the house with, mm. it's going to be a house made of Weetabix mm. and the first wind's going to blow it down. And it's not his fault because the materials he was given to do the job are not fit for purpose. So right now, we're having to make do and mend. Yeah. So I, I re- actually think the next five weeks are really important. We've got two cup competitions. We've got a number of home games in yeah. a short period of time. And it, it will tell yeah. our, our season. We will know far more by the by the tenth day of January, or we will know as much after the tenth day of January as we will by the middle to end of February, because yeah. it will we will have played big sides mm. on uh, playing in form, oh man away, yeah. and we will have problems what we have not yet encountered. So I, I think Carlo will be in his dough. Actually, I genuinely do, and we're not a one. We are not a club who generally, with the exception of Tosin and Walcott, we're not really a January buying club. No. But I think this year, 
we might have to dip in to be oh, perfectly so. frank. Yeah, I would, I would maybe one, maybe even two. Yeah, I totally to, agree. To be honest. I totally agree. Even if it's even if it's two loans or, or one by one loan, I think we need yeah. we need two better quality than what we've got coming in in January mm. because you're right, we've got we've got probably 15 players who don't play, who aren't good mm. enough to play really for whatever reason, bought by a different manager, maybe for a different shit, whatever. They're just not. It's not the player's fault, by the way. That isn't, that's football. Mm. A, yeah, a new yeah. manager comes in, he fancies players, he doesn't fancy other players. Now, that's just the way of the world, mm. but there's too many. Yeah. And what we've done, like you said before, we've sacked too many managers in too short a time and just kept throwing money at the problem without having a concept of where we wanted to go. We were just kind of running, the, getting caught up in the media things. The Premier League, they're, they're, they're signing, signing. Our, our fans haven't helped, no. incidentally. Social media has not helped us because everyone gets caught up. So-and-so signed them and West Brom are signing. And they're, they're, we're, we're bigger than them and you're... Da, 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 da. When actually somebody should have been in charge because the, the, the wages we're paying to the people upstairs are tantamount to saying... We should be at that level because that's what we're paying out. When the return we're getting is far, far below that level, it yeah. really is. And the Leeds game was a case in point, like you said. That's just Bielsa's. He was the same in Spain. Mm. He's an attacking Roberto Martinez type of manager where it's all about going forward. And we mm. score more goals than you. We'll win more games than we'll lose. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's the concept of where we're going. Well, we haven't even got to that stage. We haven't, we haven't got... Once somebody adapts their shape against us, we very rarely have got a, 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 an answer to it unless we go two banks of four. Yeah. And that's back to the, that's the previous decade. That's, that's 2000 to 2010. Not, not this Gagan press and, 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 and all over the park. It's, it's a completely different game now. It's like looking at the 70s, watching big match on, on a Sunday. And it's great to watch it, but it's a completely different game of yeah. football. And that's the aspect what, what needs changing because in another 10 years when Zach is doing this programme and you've been retired off, he's put mm, you yeah. in some home somewhere, yeah. well then, they you don't want them sitting here no, saying, saying the it, same it, thing. exactly the same old, same old. So I would say, actually, I don't want to uh, uh, just apply a, a, a base idiom to it, but if we have to write this season off, we're halfway, we're a quarter of the way through. And anyway, yeah, we're nearly yeah. at Christmas. If that's the case, well, the thing what I'm, I'll pay that in. But the reward, what I want is I want better. Mm. I want better all over the place. Not necessarily on the park, because that you've got to put a team together. You've got a squad together and you've got to learn as they go along. We all accept that. But I'm talking about mindset wise and, and um, um, methodology wise and, and, the, the, what the what the what the the actual lays on debt set yeah, of this yeah. team and this club is to be that's what's got to change otherwise we'll just be here in another year's time because we're going to start losing players then because yeah. our better oh, players will be attractive to teams who are better than us so it doesn't matter how much money you got that doesn't necessarily win you anything no it's, that's the thing about it is that we've had that we've had that thing of every year going we get him and if we get him and if we get him and you can't punch lucky sometimes it can work for you but yeah we've we've proven for years that we've thrown all kinds of money at it and nothing's happened you know we still continue to we still continue to do the same thing we're still doing the same thing now we spent half a billion pound half a billion pound if you'd give it to david moyes with a would have changed the way we'd have won all sorts, you know. And I'm not if you give David take... Moyes 25 million, yeah, I would have thought he probably would have won you something. He Might have won been the League Cup, he probably some... would have won that he team, would have won you something. And that's the if thing about it. Three more. That's the thing about it at the moment. It's just we've spent so much money, and that's the frustrating thing about it is that we're, we're still we still feel like we're scratching around, hoping, hoping for something to, to fall into place. We've got no style of play. And we've got players for, we've got players like six managers have had that's berserk in that yeah. squad. We've still got Seamus Coleman, who was David Moises. We've got Martinez as players. We've got yeah. Allardyce, Cumin, Silva, and now Ancelotti. And we're hoping, we're hoping that the manager 
can somehow get a tune out of them. Absolutely berserk. But that is it, isn't it? That's you've just said it. Let's hope it changes very quickly so that we can we can move forward. And and in ten years we're not. We're talking about our third Champions League title and not how the hell do we get into Europe for the first time? Or or even if it's not our third Champions League, because that is a reach, but if we've <laughs> maybe been in the Champions League yeah, to the last nice, stages four times by then, that'd then be nice, yeah. you could that's a flag in the floor, like I said to you before. Yeah, you, there is no when you climb Everest, you don't just go from the bottom to the top. You have a no. base camp, then the first level, then the second level, then the third level. Then you go for the pinnacle. Everyone does it. You've got it's to, same, you've yeah. got, to, you've got to establish yourself and then get a standard and improve upon it. That takes time. Nobody's thinking it's a quick fix. But right now we're just sliding down. Every time we go up, we go down. Then we go up. It's treading water, and, yeah. and it's not. Good enough, and, and, I'm, and that's the thing what I would address first of all. To be perfectly yeah, frank, yeah. fingers crossed, mate, that we start addressing some of these issues ASAP. Yeah. Listen, Dave, super. Thanks so much for taking time out having a chat. I'm go gonna on. say this, yeah. yeah. Go on, mate. As soon as we, as soon as we're allowed, myself and Mullen will be in the studio with you because he's gagging to do yeah. it. By the way, Let's so and he hasn't been well himself. No, we're not. So now oh. we're ready to. Just when it's safe. Well, we, it could be soon. Be... Listen, it could be soon. It could quite easily be soon. So well, let's hope so. Let's do that. it. Let's, let's so. do it. Let's get back in. Big thanks. Right. Cheers, Dave. Stay safe. And I will speak to you soon. Peace Cheers. out, Toffees. Love you, kid. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. And if you want more videos, join us on Patreon. See you later.